Check on the left, check on the left, check. Last go on the left. Zap. Oh, wait. <laughs> We're like panning yeah, on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. It's all weird. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, right down the middle. Uh. Well, I want to play out for the that's how we rap it, rap it, rap it, rap it, rap it. Word. Gratata. Keep going, guys, because I'm just only now like dialing it in. Get in the levels, right? Stain, uh, I want it to come oh, to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Epic. All right. Do you have Epic some, do you light some candles first? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did I cry a little bit? Yeah, hell yeah. Of course I did. Yeah, but you cried like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, he was speaking, speaking my language. I was like, oh. man, I'd really just, I'm almost there. I'm just going to shave it. <laughs> it's been a while. Hmm. Since Since I... I... <laughs> hey, guys. How you guys doing? I'm just so trying to get a good. buzz here. Stop it, Corey. You get a buzz every day of your life. Oh, Not a fret buzz, though. <laughs> hey. <laughs> wow. Is he low action kind of guy, too? Moderate action. <laughs> Moderate action. I never get super excited, but I'm not bored. You know, some people like the buzz, like even great players. Like Tommy Emmanuel seems to embrace a bit of a buzz at times. And Oh, you know what's crazy? You know? It's like most people that I talk to is like, you don't ever drink coffee before a show, right? Because it kind of has an Jitter-Z opposite effect, or something, right? But then Tommy Emmanuel's like, yeah, I just have a good cup of coffee and I'm ready to go. I'm like, damn. Don't people oh. take like nerve blockers and stuff? Well, yeah, beta yeah. blockers. I was just beta blockers. Was coffee can go for anything, I think. Well, you know, he plays fast, so I, I would think, you know, he's heightened Yeah. with the coffee. It's an upper. He probably uses, like, yeah. low-tension strings and super low action, too. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what it is. But does he? he? Uh, I guess it sounds like it. Yeah. yeah cause he's, it's he pretty does buzzy. Crazy yeah. But, like, he makes it as low as possible to where it sounds acoustically like crap, but then when you plug it in... Power. Yeah. yeah. Well, I kind of like 
there's tons of music I like a little bit of buzz in it I don't mind it <laughs> I, don't. I like I personally like that yeah. Yeah. I like are you kidding cool. Joel your whole life has been dedicated to eliminating <laughs> the buzz that's the conflict that I live in it's the dichotomy <laughs> of my life I deal with that every day it's like I love it but I, I gotta hate it for them I Yo, for myself. I'm just doing my job, folks. I'm just doing my job, okay? I don't want to have to throw you in jail. It's like every time I see you on an order, low action, low buzzing. I'm like, oh, you don't even know. You love it. Just yeah. give it a try. You want oh. some buzzing. I, I just see that and I think, well, yeah, that's why you came to us. <laughs> this Real is why all the dirt. bees are I think, I dying off because everyone hates buzz. Buzz. So we just had a little intro music with these two callas that are one of a kind special larry robinson did the inlays on these he's kind of near where they build these in northern california and um he doesn't you know he's he's done inlays for cola and stuff before but he's one of those inlay artists that like won't do the exact same thing over and over he's like no (laughs) like if you try to commission him to do like 10 identicals he was like, no, it's I'll like do them on a theme, but like, they're each going to be there. It's kind of like, it, it's kind of like asking Corey to, uh, you know, do a song. Actually, you're not, you're, I, you're not too bad I about could, that. I would if I could do the same song. <laughs> yeah, like Aaron was really funny about that too. It was like each take was like just a go at it in its own way, you know. <laughs> it just worked out. So it might be a better way to. Just live. Go with the flow. Makes it really hard when people ask what song you're playing. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of emails yeah, about that. I, I got a lot. Know. I get he doesn't emails know. all the time. Hmm? Hey, what song did you play on this video at 31 seconds? Mm. Oh, come on. Oh, it's called the Chorus Samba number 37. Chorus Samba. <laughs> <laughs> 37. Love that one. It's just in the key of something. So the these key. two ukes are kind of like the type of stuff you'll see maybe once a year from the Cala Petaluma California shop. So Wait, what are these titles? Elite something. Really something? Cool. Just custom. Custom. Custom T. That's this is not kind a of different blanket. Year. This is the sap part of the tree. That's where all the nutrients are. Come on. Anybody watching our podcast <laughs> knows that. Some people think that sap wood is a type of wood. It's uh, not, a, not a type of wood. It just... It's that it's part a type of, the of sap. No. <laughs> sap. It's sappy. Looks so, great. Um, like it's good for sad songs. So, uh, good for maybe. talk a little bit about what you think about because for me, I I hear some uh, distinct um, improvements. I don't want to say improvements, but for me, like just opened it up a bit more with this new bracing. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it hits a <clears throat> better frequency. It hits all the yeah. moves a lot better. And they sound better a lot more open and much louder too. Yeah, like you can feel the whole. Like you feel the whole like instrument, and the way and these are built too is like when you have it up against your body, they don't. The sound doesn't get muffled too. It's, it's more nice. coming off the top. Yeah, it's all coming up from here. But um, for me, like it's like it's not necessarily the volume; it's the voice, and it just comes you through like really a little voice. bit more natural, yeah. like a little bit more. I don't know. There's there's something a little bit less colored and just more open about it. But yeah. um, what it what it is which is distinctly different from the kind of more typical fan bracing that Kala was using, um, is this mini X brace kind of forward. And I say like mini, like super tiny compared to like when, and when you're looking at like a steel string acoustic or something, cause that's, you know, what's known for their X brace. But, um, it was, it was some of the custom builders in Japan that I first saw starting this like Toda and those guys who did, a similar type racing like this but i love it it's you know i think it's, it's going to take the really whole elite song. line to the yeah. next level this is this a 2019 thing. change and it's all core. Cool. Like, this is a 2019 you know, change but they had done it on a few models for, in 2018 like the um long neck maple the neck and um bigger. the also the shy. super tenor the spruce myrtle they had um so you know once we had heard it on those models shut up. like i think all of us were like, wait, what? All right, so um, what what we're going to do today is we're just going to get a listen to a number of different models in different sizes. A lot of the type of inquiries we get is just people trying to figure out what to get. And um, 
sometimes hearing them right back to back by the same player playing the same thing can help and then kind of uh, another level of that is listening to another good player play something different like a you know a different technique different song and a different player playing the same thing because that's ultimately a, you know a big factor in the whole thing too um so of course Corey and Kalei are going to be doing most of the sound samples and thanks for tuning in
All right, so we just checked out three different sopranos. The whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm gonna cell phone is going crazy. Oh, wow. yeah. Pop pop pop! I heard a pop pop pop. Veronica pop. sounds like Seinfeld started. I don't have any notifications. Oh, that was so, on the laptop. Um, or my, wait, hmm? Am I wrong? The first one was a oh. solid spruce top acacia koloa. KSO yep. ten. Yep. KSO ten. And uh, beast, really loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe. It was almost too loud for recording. Give your thoughts in a few <laughs> seconds. Actually, yeah, uh, it, it, it is. It does kind of like hit the threshold here. It's a there. different uh, type of loud because in the shop it's perfect because you know going back and forth with so many monos mm -hmm. they always shine through in that aspect as far as overall volume. And then even when we're doing sound samples, I had to like whoa, take my headphones a little bit off because it's coming in hot. Like that, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Veronica <laughs> slacking. <laughs> <laughs> Messaging. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Wow, it comes out so clear. That was from your microphone. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess. So. From the computer wow. into the microphone. Thank back you. Back to the earphone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that colo sounded great. And then um, the Connie Lea. Um, the the voicing on the new 2019 especially just seem really nice and balanced mm -hmm. yeah there's i i hear like more resonance coming from the new models which is great you know as a player or even for <coughs> sorry <laughs> it's great as a player for a player or even someone who's you know just getting started oh yeah you know it's it's good i think it's important it helps a lot with the song there's <clears throat> a lot of clarity in it it's like the yeah. distinction between the notes or like the appeal was yeah. loud and it was still pretty you know, clear, but it's still, uh, sorry. Oh, it, uh, you just, uh, punched through on the, hello, two, Joe, two hello. Oh, I got too crazy. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, bro. You just got radio friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to, but yeah, um, it's like, you know, it's just different voices and that's ultimately what we're doing here, um, is trying to show you the sounds and you can listen to them i cut off all the mics except for the two sheps very you know natural true to the acoustics um so if you're listening on a good headphone source or monitors then you should be able to pick up on those little nuances and it's like there is no right and wrong different voicings will kind of um be appeal to certain people more than that's, others maybe it's funny yeah, when you I mean, when you like put it of, when you put it that way as far as a voice we should start explaining ukulele tones and singers mm -hmm. voices oh mm -hmm. this one is like the 
Mike Love of Voices or yeah. Christina Aguilera ish. Yeah. <laughs> this one has a bit of Christina in there. Little Phil Collins as well. <laughs> Some John Mayer. <clears throat> yeah. But you know, Plus as far as like who's when, in stained? Uh, huh? Stained? Who's in Aaron, stained? Aaron Lewis. So part <laughs> part of this is is hearing different woods, but uh, I think you guys could probably agree that um, even different wood choices are um, not as much of a significant factor as as the brands and the way they build. Mm-hmm. Like a Koloha with a spruce top will sound similar to an all yeah. acacia or an alcoa. It's just going to be colored. Uh, a little bit different and have a little bit different pr- projection um but then if you go to compare it with a connie Lea, it's like no connie Lea has its own sound you know so mm-hmm. that's part of what you're hearing as we're going through these different models and brands and different sizes is like okay this is this is basically the sound you know each instrument even if it's the same type of wood is gonna be a little bit different but um but overall like you know the connie Lea soprano it has that sound you know i mean when i listen to these guys play it it's like yeah that's how it sounds when i play it if i played it better you know <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you guys are getting a better idea as we go through it and then we closed off with the rebel which i always love the sound of rebels <laughs> the rebel was good like that I was always, a mango one, right? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a mango. I've always been a, a fan of like what how mango wood sounds. Yeah, because like all the mango wood instruments that I've tried, they've all been pretty consistent, even from like um, one maker to the next. They always had like a nice warm tone mm. to it. Like for example, like at the store, normally we carry either a, a Pono mango model and maybe a Koloha mango model, and both models sounds, in my opinion, sound slightly warmer than like the acacia or, or coa models that right. you know they have to offer as well you know i was thinking like connie leo would make a really nice mango series oh, just an all yeah. mango <laughs> yeah. i was thinking about that today like a mango tenor just that would be nice one of the models coming really from Aloha nice. is an all mango with a side port and like a kind of aisle uh, some kind of nature scene in wood yeah. inlay going up they do crazy inlays on the yeah. instruments. Yeah, so we got like a half dozen of that model coming along nice. with some others. But can we do? Yeah, that one. Or, that one. It looks like it's gonna be a winner. It's crazy how different mango looks too, as far as different brands. Mm, yeah. Just where we get, get your mango sources, from. You know? yeah. From, but if one thing is consistent is that they're all not consistently the same looking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's but true. like checking out each one it's always like what's coming next you know like what's going to happen to the wood something always dramatic usually mm-hmm. or sometimes, sometimes not it's really <laughs> sometimes it's like really that dramatic beauty and sometimes it's kind of like that cute girl with freckles and <laughs> stuff, you know? i don't know that's kind of hard <laughs> ah, to I, I can dig it's it melanoma man <laughs> ah, like those organ <laughs> chicks and stuff freckles. <laughs> <laughs> she's got that uniqueness beautiful anyways um like we're gonna go on to concerts and then uh we'll come back and discuss all right
So. All right, so that was four different concerts. Ooh. Uh, mm-hmm. What did we play first? So the first one was a Koaloha um, KCM OO. Oh oh. And yeah, oh <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um, I really enjoyed that one because like their their concerts have always always been super consistent as far yeah. as having a good balance tone um, and projection. Like yeah. that's normally like. Usually, usually the concert model, like the Hawaii model, that I normally have people try first if they're like a they're just getting started. Because one of the things about Koloho is that like all of their instruments are always easy to play. Yeah, it's it, fun. It's fun. Yeah. looking at that thing, knowing exactly what it's gonna sound like. Yeah, <laughs> like, so you're thinking yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, all right, you're first in line it's like, today. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> or when a customer is trying one and they're like, oh, just not. Oh, like here, try this one. <laughs> no. Pa pow. I I don't know if it's like if it's only just the way they build them, but they they have the right set of strings paired with their instruments yeah. too, yeah. to yeah. really in, like, accommodate and enhance like the sound that they already produce. Yeah. On their own. Totally. Koloha concert always yeah. been one of my favorites. Yeah. Um. What 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 did you play after that? 
After that, we did the uh, Connie Lea K3. Uh, yep, the K3 um, concert. And um, I think that one was the uh, 2018 model. Mm-hmm. So their concerts have always been like consistent as far as like being very punchy, having that nice sound that just like jumps out when yeah. you just drum like, you, you know, a simple chord. It's a focused. Yeah. Like uh, in those lower and mid range. Yeah frequencies and also was the warmer out of the the concerts that we we recorded yeah and i i just like i tend to like warmer sounding instruments only because when you start to dig into it it doesn't get overly bright so yeah there's something that rolls off on those highest frequencies where like some of the other ones you get it right up to those brittle highest you know crisp Mm -hmm. frequencies and they kind of like roll it off probably around yeah and the differences were basically this like we're describing the same differences from the uh, soprano size to the concert size yep. when, when comparing models, you know, it was the brand, like you still had the same definitions for what changed when you heard the two, right? Yeah. As far as Colo Hall being a little bit louder just overall, but um, something... Consistent s- size to yeah, size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, that's the thing with trying to find the right instrument for uh, the customer is that which is which one did you like better because both obviously sounding sounds great what right? um can we share with people that they're not going to exactly see in here in terms of differences first between say the kcmoo and uh you know k1c or well the strings floor carbon versus uh yeah yeah and and but I'll, that's I'll changeable but yeah right off the bat but that's, that's adding to the sound yeah. right yeah i noticed the frets i mean were they like I feel like uh, the like the frets on the cola are a little bit bigger, right? Yeah. So Just like slightly. You, yeah, yeah. You feel like you don't make as a uh, full contact with the fretboard, I guess, or you don't fully have to as much as the Connie Leia. Like you mm-hmm. kind of feel. I don't know when I played, I feel the neck more on the Connie Leia, but when I play a cola, I kind of feel like I'm floating on the top a little bit more. It's not like one's better mm-hmm. than the other. It just yeah, it's just different. Like everybody comes into the store and asks us, so what's what's better? The best. I'm just like, what's the best? And then I'm I'm looking at them. It's, it's like, like, well, yeah. what I like is probably not what you're gonna prefer. So that depends on a personal choice between you and the instrument that you pick up and hold. Right, but when they hear it from a great player, it's easy to adopt that same. You know, they're like, well, if this guy plays like that, and you know, it kind of gives this this uh validation or like that, okay that kind of helps too you know, but but that's you know, as a customer yeah. side you know like if if that's good yeah. for him it must mean it's gonna be good for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then just like even if they we because majority of the customers that come into the stores you know not all of them know like who me and Corey are right, or right, right. how well we can play so it's like just being able to share that with them is no. kind of like i think it's it it helps them make their choice, you know, even so, even if they didn't know that right. we know how to play, you know. Yeah. But I I think kind of getting at your point is this like idea, um, in my head, like in a number of different ways. But it's it's like that. The more you know, the more you realize you don't know, and it's like, right when somebody gets into you, say they might like get some strong opinions based on their initial reactions to what they've tried and then they're sure that tenor's best or mahogany's best or Mm -hmm. this string set's best and it's like with us we've just seen too much and we've tried too much and there's been too many contradictions and that's like it's not exactly you know as clear-cut as that I mean we know like a good instrument when we see and hear it Mm -hmm. but um you know we don't exactly you know it reminds me of when I was a teenager and I thought like I remember thinking like strummy stuff sounded jangly and stupid and it was all about riffs and like, you know, I don't know. I mean, like the older and or the more you actually learn and, and understand things, the more you are kind of like not so sure you're going to tell somebody what's best, you know, because mm-hmm. it's just like, well, we learned there's no <laughs> rule to anything yeah. like anything mm-hmm. you thought you knew at some point you yeah. found an instrument yeah. that proved you wrong in that. Sure. Because you went through the soprano loving phase and you're like, you know, you thought you maybe didn't prefer Redwood till you tried that one instrument. You know, I mean, it's just like, you know, 
woods and sizes and sometimes even brands. Um, but let's get through <laughs> this a little bit more. So um, concerts, we, we had the Koaloha and then the Kanilea. And then do we do the Clara after the Blackbird? Mm. Yeah. And that's always, those are always impressive. Yeah. Sonically. Different. It's not wood, you know. It's, it's wood, linen yeah. and bioresin, and but that thing packs a punch. It's got a lot of low end to it. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Put, put a it's low a G song. on that thing. It's just like whoa. yeah. I mean, we were trying it with a low a G. It would be more balanced on the high mm-hmm. frequencies with a high G, but it does open up with that low G. Yeah. I mean that ma- that material sounds so great. They stop you doing carbon fiber. <laughs> I mean, I'm like super proud of them. They actually developed a material. I don't, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, when it's a breakthrough on some level. Well, what was he said? There was like a bunch of other applications that they that oh, you can use it for, right? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not just furniture, it's like, ukulele, like a but total it's replacement for. Yeah, but the fiber, trippy thing is like acoustically. Yeah, yeah. He, they, like he developed an acoustic material, like mm-hmm. you know even beyond the structural integrity for weight a soundboard kind of, yeah I don't know, you kinda, he created the, like a perfect like soundboard intentional? Yeah. but like, i still like the probably. sound of wood too you know but man what a great alternative and you don't have to worry about a humidity and all that mm-hmm. i wonder no, how long it, it took them to develop like ecoa because like a material like that must have took it was a over a long, few years but i think he was searching for a while too for mm-hmm. different materials he went to school for environmental i don't know some kind of hippie no. college uh, <laughs> <laughs> i mean but he no, could have been like super... kind of develop it like while they're already making their name with the carbon fiber instruments like yeah. that could have yeah been he was developing thought, it through that you know, period yeah. so that must have been quite a while yeah they're awesome um we're gonna listen to a tenor in a in a minute too from them but um what other concerts there was the, more we did the stc yeah, mm-hmm. Pepe's, and that's um, so that was pretty balanced. I mean, yeah. well, that's like what you said right after, right? Yeah, kind of had the best. Uh, it was like it it wouldn't get too loud or too soft, so you could be dynamic without like the dynamic range going like mm-hmm. too up or too too down. Yeah, as far as like volume. Yeah, so like you know, for a recording like this, I'm not touching you know my controls, but like that's a really handy thing when you're going to record it's uh it's nice to have those like peak levels kind of capped mm-hmm. off and and also to get clarity when you're l- playing lightly so you yeah. have like dynamic range but it's like within a range you know yeah it was more of like a like a controllable if you want like a to record something in a more controlled environment that would be like a good instrument to consider because like if you play like something that's like even more dynamic than that then you might have to back off on the mic or play a little bit harder during the, you know, like the, I guess like the crescendos and decrescendos of a song. Yeah. One one thing to note is the what makes the STC unique too is the overall length is that of a soprano, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So it it yeah. is you know overall a, a little bit smaller of a package, and it is somewhat of like the more sub the more mellow version of the tiny tenor you know it's like maybe a hair warmer but a little bit more subdued but um that kind of similar tone but the tiny tenor you know you could even put that in there because it's overall i think concert length even though it's a tenor lower bout but just having that shorter headstock and the bridge a little bit lower 12 fret to body the overall um length of the instrument is comparable to like most concerts on the tiny tenor so a little bit of a something different going on with the romeros anyway but um let's move on to the tenors because there's a good handful of those kto 10 
like this. This one. one. They're both the maple. Same. It's just the bracing. The bracing is the new bracing. But the color is different too. The case for that one is on this side, right? Or no? Yeah, I got that one. Well, who plays this song?
going to get one last sound sample from each of you guys with a totally different song from each of you guys with that long neck holla. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Yep. It you was are. warm. The KTOs. <clears throat> yeah, that was that was really nice. Um, well, all the opioids, they're super There's consistent. Lot, I, mean, yeah. I mean, it's like you can you can pick up like a, a the only time you can really compare them together is if you play a spruce top versus oh, yeah. like mm -hmm. the acacia. It's and so consistent that you can play ten of them. You can play a whole box. Yeah, and they're all and gonna like, sound good. Yeah, like there's like a when you really look at it, there's like a range of like okay, it can either sound like this or it can either sound like that. And that's like you have your range, and you play ten of them. How close it is to the middle part is like how you can really gauge, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't go off to. And the opios are like mm -hmm. like that. As far as tone, like that, <laughs> like that, <laughs> not like, like that. Like that. <laughs> drunk facts. <laughs> Hope I didn't interrupt some really key valid points. Car was explaining really. vertical earth. Vertical earth. Earth. <laughs> earth is vertical. <laughs> it's not horizontal. In, in the set, in the center, there's a elevator. Is there any um? conspiracy theories that you guys yes happen to you know like throughout this whole breakthrough thing you know people doing experiments trying to prove that the earth is round and that it isn't it's like it kind of shows like we don't know anything and we oh. can't prove that we, we oh know i don't anything. know about going back wait, are you that on the far? fence wait huh? are, like, are you saying you're on the fence are you really going <laughs> flat earth on oh no, this? no no i'm not saying like is the, this the podcast yeah, where you just announce said it? no no as like for all what we thought we really knew. know though like Cor Corey is isn't sure what if there's know? a point where you can fall off the edge over here. No, I'm not gonna say, I mean, <laughs> nah, it's, it's not like that. I'm sure you just walk around in circles on the flat earth or something. <laughs> no, but are, do, you, do you seriously question whether the earth oh, no, is no, round? No, I, I don't. Because I just look out and all, all the other planets are round, you know? Why would we be the only flat planet? Special. special. <laughs> <laughs> just like the flat earth well you know how you grow up and you feel like you're special it's because we're on a special place maybe it's all just a green screen and you know they're just putting in stars where there aren't any yeah no. it's like I mean this whole movie it's, it's like the matrix it's they're white all... out there and then there's a blanket and then just, there's just holes poked in it because <laughs> I had a crazy like idea about that like we're just in this big black yeah you space. watched Interstellar and then it just had <laughs> <laughs> okay, what what tenor did we do after KTO that? ten? <laughs> KTO ten was uh, KTO the, 10 first, was the first the first tenor. Okay, we're still talking about the first tenor. Yeah. I, heard, I heard Corey talking about the KTO ten when I was. Oh yeah, he was saying it was like this. Was like <laughs> the range, and then Clay was like vertical Earth. The Earth is vertical. Oh, what 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 color would it be? Orange. Orange. What? what what is orange? What, what's orange? What emotion does the neck feel like? <clears throat> oh. oh, the neck, not the tone. <laughs> uh, that's a... Um, getting through this. Sorry, I'm sidetracking us all over. But Kamaka. um, Kamaka. Kamaka. Mm -hmm. what Classic. Do you, what, you guys were talking about strings, so I mean that's something we commonly hear is like, oh yeah, they're better with string X or you know. Yeah. What what what's your guys' favorite strings on? Kamaka. I mean, we listened to it with the stock set. That's the Kamaka set. Know, They're actually made the, by Diadario, but playing the stock black set more and more, I I start to like the sound. And it's all fucked. Did, pop it, up. did it do all right, still so recording? Okay, okay. All right. Let's do it before the world explodes. Mike just texted me. Oh. Mike Love. Yeah. Hello? Hello. <laughs> mm, hi. <laughs> hey, man. I'm, I'm just finishing up here at the shop in Wahiwa. Okay. Um, you know what? I, I don't want to talk about ukes anymore. They all sound good. But I did... I did. <laughs> no, I mean, they all they sound good when you play them good, right? Yeah, but, um, you know, I, I just um, wanted to say... Like, I just found out um, my very good friend, Chuck Moore, um, is 
having some health problems that he's getting taken care of now but you know it's kind of kind of bummed me out just found out found out about it before the podcast but I, um, I say that because I just thought it would be something nice to him because we we all really care about him um like seriously like tons of people in the community like you you guys know this guy is one of the most amazing you know wise uh humble beautiful people ever and um I have two of his ukes here so we're gonna um close it out with Clay and Corey you know I know they're super tired right now but they're gonna play something on his two ukes just to say um that we're thinking about you Chuck and we love you and um same for all of you guys and uh we'll be back soon with more stuff so we're gonna close out with some music here aloha <laughs>